I rent a lot of cars, you know, because I go on the road and I rent cars. And, and when I drive a rental car, I don't know what's going on with it, right? So a lot of times I drive like for 10 miles with the emergency brake on. <laughs> That doesn't say a lot for me, but it really doesn't say a lot for the emergency brake. <laughs> it's really not an emergency brake, it's an emergency make the car smell funny lever. Mitch Hedberg may never have reached the level of fame and recognition as some of his peers, but I'm always going back to his stand-up albums and half-hour Comedy Central special and laughing till my throat hurts. Mitch Hedberg suffered from severe stage fright and anxiety, but pursued a career as a stand-up comic in spite of this. He released three stand-up albums, one Comedy Central special, performed on various talk shows and programs, performed at colleges across the country, and at the age of 37 he was found dead in a hotel room of a cocaine and heroin overdose. I'm a heroin addict. I need to have sex with women who saved someone's life. I truly love Mitch Hedberg's delivery material and wish he could have gotten to welcome more of his comic genius into the world. I play golf. I'm not good at golf. I never got good. I never got a hole-in-one. But I did hit a guy. <laughs> and that's way more satisfying. <laughs> You're supposed to yell four. But I was too busy mumbling. There ain't no way that's gonna hit him. Hedberg's crippling stage fright would become apparent at times in his performance. He would fall on self-deprecating remarks about his jokes if they didn't receive as big a laugh as he had hoped. You didn't get that one? Either did I, I don't know why I do it. He would often make an aside to criticize himself for not being funnier or lash out at the audience for not supplying the reaction he had anticipated. I didn't go to college, but if I did, I have taken all my tests at a restaurant because the customer is always right. <laughs> all right, all right. Thanks, Joe. That joke's better than you acted. <laughs> Perhaps it's not. Maybe it's dumb. It could be. I hear you, man. I'm not a fucking genius, for Christ's sakes. You know, I'm fucking just trying to tell some jokes. Shit. Who the fuck are you? Hedberg's jokes are mainly one-liners. Really quick, clever jokes that are often very intelligent and could require a couple of seconds to process. I wanted to buy a candle holder, but the store didn't have one. So I got a cake. In the seconds it took for his audience to get the joke, you could see Hedberg growing uncomfortable. Man, y'all gotta get into my jokes harder. <laughs> no, don't be, don't, be, don't, be, don't be give me that applause later. We need to get rolling with it and would sometimes give up on jokes before allowing them to reach their conclusion out of worry or self-doubt. Hey, people. Look, you're all right. This is dumb. To me, Mitch Hedberg's stage persona is iconic. His unique vocality and pattern of speech, his sunglasses and his rigid posture and movement, but elements of this persona were actually born out of his anxiety and stage fright. Take his sunglasses, for example. His sometimes quite literally rose-tinted glasses. In this earlier stand-up performance before he adopted the sunglasses for all of his shows, you can see that he does most of the set with his eyes closed. One time I opened up a yogurt and underneath the lid it said, Please try again. <laughs> they were having a contest I was unaware of. But I thought I might have opened the yogurt wrong. <laughs> or maybe your play was trying to inspire me. <laughs> Come on, Mitch, don't give up. I look at the floor too much. Everyone's up there. All right. Adopting the sunglasses later in his career wasn't just a style or persona building item, but a strategic choice to help combat stage fright. I like to close my eyes on the stage because I've drawn a picture of an audience enjoying the show more on the back of my eyelids. <laughs> the colored glasses made it easier for him to look out into the crowd and harder for the audience to tell whether or not his eyes were open. I want to be a race car passenger. <laughs> Just a guy who bugs the driver. <laughs> Say, man, can I turn on the radio? You should slow down. <laughs> well, we gotta keep going in circles. When I first saw Mitch Hedberg stand up, I thought some of his movements and mannerisms were to build his persona. But more and more now, I think the shake in his hand as he holds the microphone is either a result of his drug use or his anxiety. 
I used to do drugs. I still do, but I used to too. He keeps his head low and fidgets with his hands, even bringing his arm up inside his sleeve here. I'm someone who deals a lot with anxiety myself, and making videos for this YouTube channel is something that helps with it. Makes me wonder how Mitch Hedberg would have fared if he were alive for the rise of YouTube. He passed away about a month after the platform first launched. I can't help but think how he would have done if he could easily record material and release it online without the need to face his stage fright on a regular basis. I'm gonna do an entire special not facing the camera. I'm just trying to be likable up here now. I had to be likable. But in the end, I think he needed the audience as much as they did trouble him. When I'm off stage, I don't talk very much. I'm pretty quiet, right? And I hang around people who just talk nonstop. That's all they do is they talk, talk, talk. I can't get a word in edgewise. And when I do, I usually say something like, Hey man, you want some taffy? <laughs> <laughs> you don't get that joke? <laughs> I got a feeling y'all don't get half my shit. <laughs> What's up with that? Sometimes I wait to people I don't know. It's very dangerous to wait to someone you don't know. Because what if they don't have a hand? <laughs> They'll think you're cocky. <laughs> Look what I got, motherfucker. This thing is useful. I'm gonna go pick something up. I think you like me more now than earlier, so I'm gonna redo my special. Knowing how hard going out on stage was for him and how much stress it caused has to make you appreciate his commitment to the craft more. I'm just trying to be pleasant on TV. I gotta get off this damn stage. I wish it was just like a trap door that would open up and I'd fall in it. I loved his stand-up from the first time I heard it, but the more I watched him, the more I began to see him as a tragic figure, at odds mentally and emotionally with his chosen profession. I felt as though y'all were like saying, what the fuck's up with this guy? I got, I got a lot of the what the fuck's up with this guy vibe. But he put himself through that pain to try to make a name for himself and to try to bring people like myself happiness, and I will forever appreciate him for it. I work, I work at Zany's Comedy Club in Nashville, and uh, I, don't get, I wasn't getting a lot of laughs there. People weren't laughing, so after one show, the club owner said, Mitch, you're not getting any laughs. You're going to have to vacuum the club. I hope someone who didn't know of Mitch Hedberg can become a fan after seeing this video so his material can reach more people. I like baked potatoes, man. I don't have a microwave oven. It takes forever to cook a baked potato in a conventional oven. Sometimes I'll just throw one in there, even if I don't want one. <laughs> By the time it's done, who knows? So thanks for watching this video essay. There are more on the channel as are other content of a wide variety of types. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Check out some more of our stuff. I'll see you in the next video. And then there's a line that says comments. And people write down what they thought of the show. And sometimes people write negative things. And that's not necessary. <laughs> Uh, being a comedian is a very noble occupation, you know? We stand in front of strangers and try to make them laugh, you know? If, if you don't think it's funny, go home and try again next week. <laughs> don't complain, because then I can't go back there. Like, I've read something that say, Mitch sucks. Then you look up above, it has their name and address. <laughs>